Okay, well, it's the top of the hour, and we should get going because, wow, do we have a packed session today. So welcome to Ask Tom Office Hours. This is the PL SQL Office Hour session. And the topic this month is real-world testing your PL SQL code. And I want to emphasize that real-world testing part. So one, one approach we could have taken for this session was I do a presentation on this, that, and the other. Chris does a presentation on this, that, and the other. And you learn some about various features of different tools but you don't really hear about what it's like in the real world where the rest of you live, as opposed to me, uh, in terms of grappling with these challenges around software testing. So instead, we decided to invite people from around the world who are doing this in their jobs day to day, week to week. And as a result, we have this great lineup. So as usual, uh, the two usual presenters, myself and Chris Saxon, both part of the Oracle Developer Advocates team, our job being to help you be more successful, as successful as possible with Oracle database software. But we're gonna say almost nothing this whole session long. But I'll do a couple little plugs right at the beginning. So if you haven't already gotten your always free Oracle Cloud account set up, please do so. As of Oracle Open World, just about a month or so ago, uh, Larry Ellison announced that you can now sign up for the free cloud trial but also after that expires, you have access to an always free set of, of services, including autonomous database. Lots of possibilities, lots of things to do. <clears throat> Please go explore that. So let's dive right into testing. Um, so testing's hard, no question about it. Who's got the time to test? Who's got the tools to test? And as we all know, writing software is an awful lot of fun. Testing code, mm, not may maybe so much fun. So there are a lot of challenges involved in testing. Now, I've been working around or, or thinking about uh, testing code for a long time. Uh, back in 99, I released the first iteration of UTPL SQL. Uh, I started doing presentations. This is something from 2006, my six simple steps to unit testing happiness. I was gonna show you my six steps, but then I'd be talking as opposed to listening to others give their experiences. So I'll probably post this odd looking slide deck onto SlideShare just for uh, historical purposes after the presentation. So I've been looking at this area for a long time and I'm so glad to say that from when I started back in 99, there's been a proliferation of effort around unit testing, around automated testing for Oracle database, PL SQL specifically. And that's why we're here today to hear so much from people doing the real work. In terms of speakers, we have a whole bunch. First up, we'll have Jasmine Flurry, an independent consultant. I won't try to pronounce the name of her organization. She lectures at the University of Applied Sciences, Northwestern Switzerland. She focuses on database development, del continuous integration, delivery pipelines, automation of tasks. Lots of good stuff there. We'll move on to Swathi Ambati and Mike Becker, both working for Triology, both Apex developers and database developers. And they're gonna talk about how they built an Apex application to help them do the unit testing with UTPL SQL. We'll move on from there to Deep D. Bandari, a senior software engineer at Fidelity Investments. And she's gonna talk about her experiences with unit testing, testing automation, and what she does to try to promote engineering excellence in her community of developers. And I should just remove the word try. She does promote engineering excellence in her community. From there, we'll switch gears a little bit. So everybody before that will have talked about using UTPL SQL, which is an open source framework for unit testing of PL SQL code, the version three of which is completely rewritten from my original base of code and is fantastically better than anything I ever could have done. Anyway, Patrick, who has also been working with UTPL SQL, in fact, we met years and years and years ago around my first iteration of UTPL SQL, and he and I have done a number of different initiatives around unit testing over the years. Uh, Patrick is gonna talk about using SQL developers unit testing features and also SQL developers command line interface to automate processing around using those features. And then finally, and hopefully there'll be time for Sam. Sam is a member of the UTPL SQL version three team. He is very active in that project. He's also very active on Twitter and beyond promoting uh, compassionate coding in software and basically promoting testing of software to improve quality and overall experience for our users. So quite a lineup. Let's get going. I'd like to turn it over to Jasmine to get started. Jasmine? Hello, everyone. Take it away.
So you should now see my screen. We okay. do. I, I'm here with uh, some lessons from two projects I, a project I did. One was a data mart project. Um, it was an Oracle data mart that we built Greenfield. And the second one was a Java project with an Oracle database backend. I start with the data mart project. As I said, it was a Greenfield project that we did. And um, we were four developers. And the data mart was doing um, feeding data to normal reporting application. Um, we had the one challenge, the sources were not one data warehouse, but two of them. They were building, um, as we build the data mart, a new data warehouse. So we had to be uh, ready for the migration from the old data warehouse to the new one. So, and we didn't know when that will happen. So we had to prepare um, and develop also the preparations for this switch from the old data warehouse to the new one. And what we did was building a staging area in the data mart um, for the comparison of the data for the do from the two data warehouses. From there on, we transformed and loaded our star schema, um, which data marts normally have, um, where the reporting was happening. And what did we test in that setup? Um, we tested for the migration um, if both sources contained the same data, and um, that was important for the migration. And we also tested um, if our logic um, did the, the right thing and the thing we wanted it to do. And the example I want you to show were the example from the migration, from the staging area, the first part of that. So how do we set up those tests? Um, the setup was UTP LSQL. Um, we had multiple test suites for the transformation logic and every package um, that we had in PLSQL had its own test suite or test package. Um, we had those tests on the development and integration environment deployed and running. And we don't had, have that, had that on production only on development and uh, integration. We had the one test suite for the data comparison that made sure that the migration did what it should and that we still will have all the data that we need once the migration happened. So this test suite contained all the tests for the data comparison. Um, we tested uh, interface specifications and uh, as well the amount of data they, that they delivered, that it was the same as before. Um, especially here was that they had those two data warehouses running for the same time, also in parallel operation for uh, a week or two. And um, in those two weeks, we just had to make sure um, that we had the same data from the old one as we have from the new one. And this test suite was also deleted after the successful uh, migration of the data warehouses. And here was the first time that we had a test suite in production because we needed to make sure that also production data was the same thing that uh, from the new as from the old data warehouse. Um, a first example from those tests, um, as you can see here, the first thing, the annotation that marks this procedure as a unit test, this is UTPL SQL for those who don't know UTPL SQL, it just marks this procedure as a unit test and describes it in some words. So this um, procedure checks the amount of records between two tables and then uh, counts the amount of records from a table in the old system and saves it to a, into a variable. And then it counts the amount of records in the new system from a table and saves it into a variable as well. And what we then could do was comparing those two variables in an assertion of UTPL SQL that told us if that was successful or not. So if we have the same amount of records in the old system as we have in the new one in the tables that we set up. The second thing that we tested here was a data comparison. We again have an annotation for the test that describes it. So we check here the content of two tables and open then cursors uh, for the, the data comparison. And compare then in an assertion again 
if the old data, uh, what we have as expected data, is equal to the actual data that we get from the new data warehouse. So th those two tested, uh, those two tests were the baseline that we could do the acceptance testing for the migration. What were the learnings for, from this project? The test of the data of the migration helped us a lot um, to do the automated acceptance testing. We didn't have to do any manual tests for the acceptance testing that we could say, yes, the migration of the data warehouse for us was successful. That was also everything automated and we saved a lot of time there. Um, the second one was the testing of the database logic helped us find errors easily. So while testing, we found many errors that would, would have popped up eventually, but were easier to fix when uh, found early. Nice. The implementation um, of UTPL SQL was very easy when we could do that from, from the beginning because all the developers could, could get uh, used to it and also uh, learn on the way. But we found that, uh, we thought that um, it went, would be very fast that every developer was up to speed with testing and UTPL SQL because we didn't have the same knowledge of it, or not all the developers had the same knowledge and that required more time than we expected uh, first. And, um, we thought that would go a lot faster, but it didn't. So let's go to the second project. Um, this is one of two projects I did that was a Java project, but had an Oracle database as a back end where all the logic was stored in. Um, in that project, we were three developers and we were not the developers that initially built the application. So we had to do maintenance and further development, but from the developers that initially built that application, uh, none of them was there anymore. Always fun. Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> so two of those three devs were uh, senior Java developers, and one of those three was me, mm -hmm. a database developer. And I already had experience with PLSQL, but not so much with PLSQL testing at that point. Mm -hmm. What we had is most of the application logic was in stored procedures in the Oracle database. And the application more or less was just getting um, data from the database and providing it to the front end, and getting data from the front end, putting it to the database. That was the whole Java part. And the rest was in those stored procedures. And we agreed because most of us uh, knew JUnit um, that we did the testing in JUnit. And what we tested is if the stored procedures really are doing what we think they are doing. Because they, uh, most of them were very complexly written, um, rarely documented. And we, were, we had to make sure that they, after we made changes or refactored them, uh, made the same thing as before. And we did that with JUnit in the back end. The learnings from that project were that the testing in database logic is possible. It went very well. Um, it felt as a PLSQL developer very unnatural for me because I'm testing a language in another language. So for the Java developers, it was uh, easier. We were very fast in writing tests because all of us knew uh, JUnit and using the language that most developers knew at that time was a very good idea because, because we were fast, we could uh, improve the software very, very quickly. And testing the code before changing it is always necessary for me now after that project mm -hmm. because we had this baseline that we assured that it still makes the same thing as before. So, any questions? Thank you, Jasmine. So let's see, we're gonna do a quick check on time. You're, you're, you finished one minute ahead of time. That was fantastic. Okay, great. Um, and I don't have any questions coming in yet. I had a couple quick ones. Did, did you, so can you go back to the slide where you compared the two result sets? Yeah. I just wanna make sure that 
you know, it's so easy to, to look at things like that and not realize what you're looking at. The data. It's just incredible the amount of work that UTPL SQL is doing for us here. So yeah. we, we open a cursor variable, we pass in the two cursor variables in this, in this chained method invocation, and it takes care of all the underlying work for us. Really, really fantastic. Um, and then can you go forward to the lessons learned? The last one, uh, right, getting all developers up to speed. Did you, did you get any, so what were you, did you get any learnings about what you would do differently next time in terms of how to get people up to speed on this, on this kind of stuff? We didn't do a lot of pair programming. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the point where every developer was doing the same mistakes uh, the other ones were doing as well. Ah. And that uh, costed a lot of time. I would, if I would do it again, I would a lot more do pair programming on the testing part, also on the implementation part as well, probably. <laughs> but the know-how uh, increase would be then more linear and we would be faster in, in learning. All right, great, thank you. And we did have one question just come in and then we'll move along. Does UTPL SQL just compare data on the count or does it actually verify all data? And as Sam immediately replied, it's verifying all the data if you use the cursor comparison. Yes. Yes, and then uh, if you, oh, right. sorry. Uh, I think Yasmin can also. Uh, uh, no, Sam, go, for, go forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're using cursor, it does not only uh, compare the, the data, but also the, the types of the data. So it does a full blown comparison. Declaratively, all you have to do is say, please do this for me. That's the way it should be. Okay, thank you so much, Jasmine. I'm gonna grab the thank screen you. share back. Yeah. And next up we have Dee, Senior Software Engineer at Fidelity Investments. Dee, take it away. Hi, I am Deepti Bandari, a Senior Software Engineer working for Fidelity Investments since 2013. I am very passionate about working with data, designing and developing complex database systems, automating testing, of course, and a big supporter of engineering excellence. I also enjoy learning and sharing knowledge. Um, I've been doing a lot of automated testing with UTPL SQL in the past couple of years, and I really, really like it. Um, it has made me honestly a better engineer, a better mentor, and I've gained a lot of trust and respect along the way. So I'm here to talk about why I test or why I like it, uh, challenges with testing and possible ways of how I've overcome those challenges. So why, why test or why do I like testing? It's because I'm able to produce high quality code. I have so much more confidence in my code now because I know exactly how a piece of functionality behaves in a given scenario. I know when it'll work or when it'll raise an exception and what kind of exception to. Uh, it's been great, really. Um, and I can refactor code without worrying about breaking existing functionality. Mm -hmm. It used to be very scary for me to touch my code or someone else's code that doesn't have tests in place uh, because I couldn't, I wouldn't know uh, if I was breaking existing functionality and I wouldn't know until very late. Um, and also one of my other favorite things about testing is thinking about different test case scenarios. Um, so I ask myself questions like, am I covering all the positive and negative scenarios? Do I know how a particular um, functionality behaves when it enters the exception block? Is this test required? Is this valid or adding any kind of value? So these are all the reasons why I like testing uh, personally, and it keeps me going and I've been falling in love with it. <laughs> um, of course, there are challenges, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about three particular challenges uh, that I faced and I've tried to overcome now. Uh, the, the first one is uh, different interpretations of what a unit is. Most people think of tests as uh, for a procedure. I have this one procedure and I have to write one corresponding unit test procedure for it. So what if I have to modularize this procedure and split it into maybe three or four procedures or functions? Would I be writing three corresponding test procedures for this? 
um no because at this point <clears throat> you're just um writing tests because you have to not because it's the right thing to do um so in my opinion personally i like uh, behavioral driven unit tests which basically defines um, a behavior as a unit hmm. so there could be 10 different behaviors for a particular uh, functionality you're writing and each could be its own test case or a test procedure in utpl sql um, the next biggest uh, challenge i think that a lot of people face and one of the reasons why a lot of people resist or dislike writing tests is because of the data setup required mm -hmm. or the marking that you have to do in order to test a simple thing especially in big monolith um, complex systems where everything is connected everything is twined how do you um, test a small thing without setting up its parents like a table's parents and its parents and it always seems like it doesn't end um, so and also as these kinds of tests start to grow in a test suite the test runs start to get really slow and it can get very frustrating for an mm -hmm. engineer and can slow down development cycle so maybe like these are something that I've done. Uh, maybe just set up the least amount of data that you need to run a particular test or rely on existing data. Um, now, you have to be careful about that because you need the data to be consistent in and across environments if you're relying on existing data. And also share setup when possible uh, within a test package or suite. So frameworks like UTPL SQL give you all these functionalities you you can use um, a bunch of annotations to share setup between packages mm -hmm. and suites you can leverage um, rollback because when you're setting up so many tables you have to also tear it down to uh, get back the environment to the state you started testing in so i would highly encourage leveraging all those uh, functionalities in utpl sql um, the third one is getting influenced by implementation while thinking about test cases. Very often, we write test cases after implementing code. Tests written then could potentially be based on implementation and not requirements. Yep. This prevents the team from thinking about um, edge cases or missing requirements and asking very important questions early on. Um, and things get caught later and it just slows down everyone uh, if it happens very late in the cycle. So one of the things that I do is TDD, which is test driven development, where you can directly translate requirements to test cases, uh, write uh, a simple test first, implement just enough code to get the test to pass. Um, and this may not be the most optimal solution or the most modular um, solution at the time, but you still have tests in place to, uh, for you to run when you refactor this code or make it more optimal um, and most modular. Um, so to kind of summarize, I want to really encourage everyone to uh, test their code and automate it because automated lower level tests are very important. They're fast, they're repeatable, and they also give you fast feedback. Um, that's all I had. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dean. So what I'd like to do is uh, one of the most interesting things you talked about is I think part of the most challenging aspects of doing database based testing which is that setup and mocking around data structures. And I'd love to come back to that and find out if you, there are specific things you've done and lessons you can transmit, but I'm gonna hold off to the end of the session. We might actually think about doing a separate session just on that because it's probably, and all of you can you know, pitch, you know, pitch in your own thoughts on this, but to me, that was always one of the biggest challenges around testing database driven code, having the database dependency. Uh, I just saw, in fact, on Twitter, there was a thread that got started up by somebody who said that a unit test is not a unit test if it touches the database. And to some extent, you know, it's just semantics. You can just define a unit test as being testing a deterministic unit. But the reality is that, of course, most of our code, our code, touches database. So hopefully we'll have time to come back to that. Um, okay. What we're going to do right now is move on. And I, I have to confess I'm a little bit embarrassed. I had, 
we did a lot of prep in advance of who's going to speak in what order. And I skipped right over Swathi and, and Mike. So Swathi and Mike, it's your turn. Let's find out what you've been doing around testing and specifically using Application Express to help you test more effectively. Okay, hello. Hello. My, my, cam, is, my cam is off. You switched off, right? But you can okay. switch it back on. Oh, no, I can't. You can't? <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, fix that. Host my stop. apologies. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, okay. Ask to start video, yes. Ah, okay, okay, yep. okay. Ah, okay. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Um, hello, everyone. Um, we will now talk about um, run and monitor PLC per unit tests with Apex, and I will explain our approach shortly, and Swati will show the live demo. And, um, but first, let's see who we are. Um, we are Swati and Mike, and we are both database developers at Triology in Germany, and we've got some years of experience in Oracle database development and uh, PLC cool, and we both have a passion for Oracle Apex. Um, okay, let's start with the content. The next slide. Um, well, we don't want to discuss whether testing of uh, PSQL code is a good idea or not. Um, we assume the answer is yes for all of you, right? And um, we will also not discuss um, the UTP SQL framework at this point. Um, instead, we'd like to share our ideas and experience on how to run and monitor UTP, uh, UTP SQL tests with Apex. And um, as mentioned, we had requirements to write um, unit tests uh, for legacy code. And we use the UTP SQL framework and to write and um, run tests, we use the SQL developer. Um, but as a best practice, we should run our tests very frequently and we wanted to make it easy to quickly run tests and identify the results. And since the application running on the database was developed in Apex, we decided uh, to use Apex for the testing as well. And so we come to the next slide. And um, what is the application about? Well, it can run test packages developed with the, with the UTP SQL framework. And of course, it can show the results. And it's possible to run one or many single tests, as well as test packages um, or all of your tests. And um, one can identify the errors uh, and also compare the resu results with um, previous output. And um, another point is tests and results can be accessed by developers, as well as from project management side. For example, test managers can see the test statistics with, without accessing any development tool, just using the browser without um, asking for database user or connection details. Um, okay, in the next slide, um, you can see we have uh, four schemas. Um, one is for the UTP SQL framework, one for the application source code, another one for the test code um, containing the UTP SQL test. And we've created um, one separate schema for our application. It's named as UK here, and all our application logic is implemented in that schema. Um, of course, we need some grants to run the test code and to access the UTP SQL API, but it's not necessary to have access to the application source code itself. Okay, last slide is um, about the integration of the data. In our case, we use the JUnit reporter to receive the test results. But uh, to get a historical view on our results, we need to store them somewhere. And that is why we created a simple data model containing three tables, as you can see here. And uh, in the tables, we store some different kind of information, such as complete XML output and some statistic for the whole test run, as well as package-based statistics, as well as each and every test case result in detail with particular error and failure message if applicable. And uh, to process the tests and to derive and store XML output, we have developed um, one API which is used when running the tests from our Apex application. But it is also possible to use this API, for example, by a scheduled database job and use the Apex frontend only to monitor test results. Okay, but let's now let, let's now come to the demo. Swati will show the, the, the application. Don't worry, I'll cut this all out later. 
but so we, we can see you, Mike. We can't hear you, and we don't see any screen share. We see Swathi. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Here there I am. <laughs> yeah. As Mike already mentioned, uh, we have developed the uh, test cases for legacy code, um, where we used to write test cases for a huge uh, number of APIs. Uh, for writing test cases, uh, of course, we used UTPL SQL framework. We find it very useful at that time. And uh, the same time, we used to have uh, update and status meetings where we can also discuss about our findings, about test cases results. And uh, in this process, during this test phase, we have developed this application to make us more convenient to run and monitor the test packages through this application. So let's see how we used UTPL SQL testing application uh, in real time. So uh, this is the, um, is everyone see the application? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the overview page. Um, left side, you have a menu where you have an option uh, to see a overview about uh, all test runs to run the test packages through this application and also an option to run the test packages which are executed through this um, application and uh, so uh, before i go into the detail about uh, overview page i just want to show you about uh, sh show you how to run test uh, packages utpl sql test packages through this application so um, here, just by clicking start testing button, st testing option, you get, an op get a page uh, where you have multiple options to run test packages. So here I can, uh, the first option is a username. Here we can easily select the username. Here I got the list from my database, username list. So I just select the username and then um, I select the test user because I wrote the all uh, demo test packages in this user. So then uh, when I click on the sweet path, then I get the list of sweet path details. Uh, if I mentioned in the test packages, I'll get here, otherwise no. So I wrote the test, uh, I defined already these sweet paths so I can see it here. So when I select a particular uh, sweet path, let's select one and see. When I select a particular sweet path, then I get the um, test packages, uh, which are belonging to the sweet path. And then here you can see the um, list of uh, test packages which are, which are belonging to the sweet path. And you can here uh, select multiple test packages here and then uh, below you can see the multiple test cases which are belonging to the selected test packages. So here again you can select um, multiple test cases from different test packages and just click on run selected mm -hmm. button uh, then you can uh, run the uh, test packages. Uh, for the demo I would like to run all the test, package, uh, test packages from this user, test user. So I just click on the run all tests so it's going to, uh, in few seconds, it's going to show me the results. So here it is the results. So in the, so this is the latest test run results, uh, which showed me the uh, results uh, in the percentage wise, as well as the count of the total test cases and the success and the failure and error. As a developer, I'm very eager to see what is that error. So I just click on the error and then I can find the details about the sweet path and test case name and test status. And just uh, by clicking on this binocular symbol, you can mm -hmm. see the error message, uh, which we get from UTPL SQL framework, uh, the same message and the test duration and test case name and test path details, everything. Uh, in the same way, when we go back to overview page, in the same way, uh, when you click on the failure count, just uh, go to the, uh, you get the list of the failure test cases and the test packages list. And you can also see the, um, what is the failure message by clicking the binocular symbol. So uh, just, I'm just going back to overview page to see uh, some more details. Uh, so here in 
Below part, you can see the test runs report. Here we maintain the history of all test runs, where first row has the latest test runs. So here we have the time and date and the total test success and failure and error count and also duration. So let's click on the detail. So when you click on the detail, you can see the results uh, sweet path wise and the uh, test packages wise. So in this trio uh, sweet path, we have 19 test cases and uh, in trio application sweet path, we have 15 test cases. So though these test, um, these test sweet paths has error. So it showed me as in red in color. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here uh, we have just a package test between string. It has no error, so it's uh, white in color. So we can easily recognize when we have a huge number of, uh, huge uh, number of test packages. Mm -hmm. So I just want to see uh, what are the test cases under trio.application. So just you can click on this detail binocular symbol. And again, you can, oh, sorry. Yes, I've sometimes had that happen too. It's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I can't access. Okay, I just go back. No. It's a modal. Okay. Struct somewhere. Okay, my application is still working, but. Tracked screens. Can you scroll the horizontal bar down, the vertical bar down? Is there a button at the bottom? Mm, or is it at the top? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Mm. And if you just refresh the page? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Great suggestion. Thank you. The Steve. voice of experience. <laughs> yeah. And Eric, okay. one of our one of our attendees is saying the same thing. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, so let's go back and the uh, trio dot applications in this sweet path. I have fifteen test cases. I I want to see the test cases details. Just click on that. You can see this um, detail information. The list of fifteen uh, test cases. And um, if you just want to click, uh, if you just want to see the failure messages, you can just filter it here. I just want to see the failure test cases uh, from this test uh, sweet path. So you can just click here. And if you want to see the just error uh, message, you can just filter it out easily. And uh, uh, I'm a very lazy developer, so I just click on the show all. Mm -hmm. So I can easily see the error and failure information beside the test case status. Here I can, uh, without clicking every time this binocular detail information, just the failure. What is the failure here? What is the error here? Or so Swathi, I would say stay, stay at a higher level for the rest of your presentation as we're a bit over time. And we don't oh, need to go okay. into all the details. Okay. That, looks, that uh, looks great. And I like the fact that you've already built in some, some smooth paths for developers. I just want to click this one button and you got it. It's nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that's all about UTPL SQL testing application then. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And uh, okay. Do we have time or? Yeah, sure. Maybe we should keep going out to the others and then we'll come back and, and look at this some more if we, if we have some time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One question that did come up is the uh, the UTA test that you're recording, are they going into the UTP3 schema or your own schema? UT3 schema? Uh, this, this application logic is under the, the UTA schema. So all the data that you're storing, all the data about the tests? Yeah, uh, this is under UTA schema. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not UTP LSQL schema, yeah. Okay, okay thank great. you. Thank you, that was fun. All right, so we'll continue on. Hopefully we'll have some time to go back. If not, I think I'll do another testing session soon. So next up, Patrick Burrell, who's been involved in unit testing efforts around PL SQL for many, many years. Almost 20. Wow, you're getting old. Take it Thanks. away. Thanks. Not as old as me, of course, never as old as me. <laughs> Thank and... you. Go ahead, sorry, no, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um... I'll just share my screen. Share. Go. 
Okay. Um, I've been uh, working with uh, uh, U2PL SQL since now nearly day one. Um, and uh, at some point we were uh, working on, uh, on, uh, on a project and we actually started using uh, SQL Developer for unit testing. Why? Just because it seemed like fun. And uh, the, the problem back then with U2P SQL 2 uh, was that you had to uh, do a lot of coding to get the, the test cases done. And we wanted other people to be able to, uh, to add um, test cases to our set of uh, unit tests. So, um, yeah, and that's where uh, you, uh, uh, SQL Developer comes into play. Um, first, up, I'll show you a bit about how uh, it works in, C in SQL Developer. Um, we've seen uh, already uh, in the last presentation the, the function between string. Um, let's say we start with this simple implementation there. Um, if I want to create a uh, unit test for this, I can just go into uh, SQL Developer, select uh, the unit test part. By the way, if this isn't available, uh, you should uh, go into uh, window, uh, no, some, somewhere over here. Um, make sure this part over here is visible. Um, and if you want to add a test here, you can just create a test, select which function you want to test on which schema, uh, in this case, between string. And then you can just uh, give it a, a good name. I've created a, a nice cheat sheet here um, to put this in here. Um, this makes it a lot easier for, for non-developers to create test cases. Uh, starter processes, we'll skip that for now. Um, but they can just put in their uh, the the values they want to uh, want to test. What am I doing? F G H. And let's say we want to start at three, and we uh, want to end at five. For here, that's for five, and then you'll give you uh, the re the result you're expecting. C D E. And that's how uh, anybody can create a test case for you. Uh, specify validation. Well, we don't need any in this case. Tear down, uh, uh, clean up your room, like my mom always said. And then that's all uh, anybody uh, uh, has to do to create a test case. Um, I'll just go in here, give this a better name. Then this one, uh, let's call it normal behavior. Rename this one. And if, you, if I run this, I'll get the result. So that's everything uh, somebody who doesn't uh, uh, code a lot has to do to create test cases. Of course, um, one test case is like no test case. So um, I've already prepared some test cases here, which I have exported uh, into a file. Yes, you can continue there, um, which makes it easier for uh, uh, easy for uh, the different developers to create their own test cases on their own schemas with all these. Uh, uh, the, all these free databases running around, uh, people can just create their their own test cases. You can even create test cases on um, on your production environment or on your test environment. Export them into your development environment. Import the the XML file and just have everything there. So in this case, I've created like what is it, seven test cases in here. So if now if I run my test set, I'll see that there are uh, problems with the code. Um, one of the nice things about uh, U2PLS or, or uh, unit testing 
is you can just uh, implement a new version of your, uh, in this case, function. I'll just skip over these two. And if I run my test again, I can see that in this case, uh, everything is green. So if something goes wrong, if uh, uh, we have uh, an error in production, we can create a test case on production uh, um, and look at uh, uh, the result, export that into the, um, the development environment and then uh, solve the error and then, uh, yeah, make sure the, the, the other uh, test cases don't um, fail, so you don't get a regression. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, you ha uh, have a lot of uh, CICD uh, tools available. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. Right. Okay. And, sure and um, you would actually want to have uh, uh, the tests being run automatically um, when the, uh, the, the build is being made. Um, and for that, I've created, um, let me see where I've got that. I've created a uh, small batch file. I'll just type sweet, uh, which gets me a uh, uh, a number just from a from a sequence. Then runs uh, all the unit tests using the SDCLI SQL Developer command line interface. Uh, I want to do unit testing. I want to run a suite. And the name is uh, the name I'm uh, I used in the um, in SQL Developer IDE, uh, which repository? Well, in this case, the Office Hours. Which database? That's the database connection you uh, created in um, uh, SQL Developer uh, uh, user interface. Log three. I want to see all the possible logging, and it will return me the unit test ID, which I got from the sequence. If I don't uh, give it a, a specific number, it'll come up with a, 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 a GUID, um, universally uh, I, unique identifier, which changes all the time. And I will not know which one it is. I'll okay. need the, uh, the, the unit test ID, so I can use that for my dump XML file uh, to get the information of that unit test. So if I uh, execute this one, and now it retrieves the, the unit test, it runs the, the test suite using that uh, ID I just retrieved. And if all goes well, that takes a lot of time. Running lots of tests. Only seven. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Probably my database is slow. Why are you doing nothing? Because you're doing the demonstration. That's when things go wrong. Yeah, and never do live demonstrations. Oh, there we go. Never do live demonstrations. Always do uh, live demonstrations. This is the number. Uh, no, nah, never. <laughs> Uh, this is the the number I got from the uh, from the sequence, which I'm using as the uh, uh, handle to my unit testing. Unit testing was successful, and uh, this is the output which uh, comes into an uh, in this case 13.xml, um, which can be fed into uh, your CI/CD tool. Um, I'm not a very good uh, XML. Uh, guy but uh, I've created this one and this one is uh, pretty much uh, what you would want to see. Um, if you go into, well, and of course we'll go into SQL, uh, Peel SQL Developer, which is the best. Um, I can just uh, get the, the results from the, uh, from the, the repository. They're all sorted here. You see the, the funny ideas. And uh, you can just, just do a, a, a give all your 
uh, SQL magic, uh, use that and uh, see what's what's going on. Uh, get all the the success ones, get all the the failure ones, and yeah, you can see what exactly what's been going on on the uh, on the unit tests. So that's I think that's about it. That's great. Thank you, Patrick. So we've seen UTPL SQL examples and different kinds of usages. We've seen uh, usage of SQL developer, both the user interface and the command line. Um, let's finish up and we're, wow, we are like right on time. You're also principled and, and, uh, and dedicated. Let's finish up with Sam and talk to us about what you've been doing lately with UTPL SQL. Yeah. So can Sith I see Lord myself? Sam, yeah. I can see you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to show you one thing today um, that I really love to use in the last couple of months. I am mainly working on a legacy project and therefore I often get in touch with code and functionalities I don't know at all. And uh, let's just hop into a Star Wars example because uh, we had enough of between string. Uh, we are working on a Death Star database and are asked to uh, add some new columns, some new functionality. And in order to do this is uh, we first have to understand what the database is doing. And the first thing we are usually doing is uh, to Look at the tables. Okay, we have a name, we have a code, a section ID, a number in section, and we are not quite sure what these, these things are, but uh, that's okay. We have also a Death Star sections table, pretty straightforward, and we have also this Death Star room manager with its <coughs> at room procedure. What we can see from the public API is that we uh, need a name and a section ID and also a code. The code is optional. And this is a great example how you can transport information about your functionality uh, by just choosing appropriate types. Both varchar2 and n and simple integer are Oracle subtypes which come with a not null constraint. So I immediately know I need to pass these two parameters. We don't really know what this thing is doing, but we can just create a test suite. This is a common UTPL SQL annotation, suit, suit path, test. And what we are now doing is we set up our test we create two new sections and we are using negative IDs to make the distinction between test data and probably existent normal data more easy. Then we go ahead and use the functionality we want to explore <laughs> um, by adding one room and two rooms for section one and a third room for a section two. We also add a scenario where we don't pass a code. So we create this unit test and we run this unit test and great, we have a unit test that does nothing. If we look into the tables, nothing changes, which is quite normal because UTPL SQL rolls back all the DML you do inside of a test. So let's run this unit test with, with a neat little functionality of UTPL SQL, which is the flag force manual rollback. And what's happening now is that the test is run as if we had the annotation rollback manual. If we are now looking into our tables, we got some data. Oh, that is great. We can have a live look at our test data now. And by looking at the data, we can draw some conclusions. We have uh, the number in section, which is 
filled in automatically and seems to be based on the order of adding. We also have the code and if we don't uh, provide it, it seems to be auto-generated from the name. What we shouldn't forget is uh, to roll back because we have now uncommitted uh, data changes and if we do some DDL afterwards, we would accidentally commit these changes. Now every test data is uh, rolled back again. So let's add some more scenarios to verify our, our assumptions. We add another room without code for section one and another room for section two, all without passing the code. And we are now look again at our scenario. And now we really get an idea of what this function does and how it's working, which is great. And uh, our assumptions are uh, verified. So what do we do from here? Luckily, we have uh, SQL CL session open and we are going to do the same as we did in the IDE before. We run our test, takes a bit, and then we uh, use a very great functionality of SQL CL, uh, which allows plugins. And I wrote a little formatter plugin that we will now activate. Uh, set select dual clipboard. And now we just select the same we did before. That's our rooms where section ID. And what happens now is that we get the current state of our query in a, in a uh, select from dual way. And it's also right copy to our clipboard. We can now hop back to our test and create an expectation, a cursor with what we just got out from SQL CL. And as you see, it's kind of readable, uh, kind of understandable, and we can now easily create a comparison. We open a cursor for the actual data and we compare them. That's pretty slick. Let's roll back so we don't get into um, blocks. So let's run our test again now. And we get some failures. Um, this has two reasons. Uh, one is UTPL SQL doesn't know how it should uh, combine the two result sets, but we can tell it how to do so by using join by. And we say, please use the code column as our primary key. And we can also tell UTPL SQL to ignore the ID column completely because uh, this column will obviously change every time. Mm -hmm. So, and if we run our test now again, we have a working approval, our snapshot test. We can now go on and add more functionality with the knowledge we gained during writing the tests and with the confidence to not mess up things without noticing. I hope you liked the little example and start using tests not only as a regression, purpose, but also to explore new functionality. Really nice, Sam. Thank you so much. All right. So we are right up on the top of the hour. Wow. You all did so well in terms of managing your time. I appreciate it so much. I'll turn on my camera. Um, so what I'd like to actually do now is bring Swathi back on to make an announcement regarding the application that she just demonstrated to you. Swathi? Can you turn on your camera? Yes, there she is. And unmute.
Okay. Yeah. Hi again. I would like to tell you that we are going to um, make it available this app in GitHub uh, till end of the November. And if you would like to know more about this application, you can join us on the conference. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's so wait, so, so, like to show. so the application you just showed us, the Apex app, you're going to make available on GitHub. Yeah. And, and how do we get? How do we know where to go to get that? Uh, Twitter. Twitter. So, so, Twitter, yeah. so, so basically follow you so that, that we see your announcement. And, yeah. <laughs> and let me just, I'm just going to bring your slide. Um, tell us your Twitter account. In fact, we'll put SM, it in the chat. Uh, SM ready 19. Okay. Uh, should I? So SM R E D D Y 19. Yeah. Follow her. Follow Swathi. Oh, I'm terrible <laughs> That's at typing. That's nice. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, thanks so much for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. So thanks, everyone, for attending. Where We are on the hour, over the hour. I think we've covered questions that came up. A number of things have been discussed on the chat. Um, but I do want to honor everyone's time. So thanks for joining us. Hopefully, you got a lot out of that session. And I think that there were enough topics that were raised, and I'm going to look at doing another testing-related session, maybe get down to some specific uh, topics and, um, and explore them in a bit more detail. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great session, and thanks, everybody, for your, your presentations. They were great. Bye, everybody. Happy coding. Bye-bye. And speakers, Thank you, if you want to stay on for a minute, we can we can discuss, do any debriefing. It takes a little while for everybody to roll off. If you have to go, don't no worries. But I'll stay on for a few minutes. Thank you, Stephen, for great great opportunity to share wow. with everyone. You're welcome. And I love not having to do any work to put it. Well, I did a little bit of work to put this. <laughs> you did all the heavy lifting for me. Really fantastic. Um, yeah. It will take a while for people to wind, wind down. We don't have to wait, really, unless if there's something sensitive you want to say about how much you hated what I said. You can wait till later. But any any feedback, any thoughts about um, things we could have done differently or better or, or next steps? So, Dee, as I mentioned, I, I'm really especially interested in exploring the data setup side of dealing with database testing. Yeah. Because um, I think that's where people really get stuck a lot. Yes. Um, even if you are going to write the UTPL SQL test and it's so much easier in V3, that still seems like such a big barrier for people. Mike, have you run into similar kinds of issues? Swathi, are you still on? Um, Jasmine? Yeah. Ja Yasek, hi. Hi. Hey, hey Yasek. I just wanted to let you know that uh, Philip Salvesberg is actually working on, uh, on a s some kind of helper. Uh, uh. Like that would allow you to oh, helper generator that would generate helper packages that will make the data setup much easier. I think mean, uh -huh. this is something everyone struggles with. Yep. And we've had quite a lot of discussions across uh, our UTP SQL uh, team to, to see like what, who's doing what and how uh -huh. we can try to come up with a, a, a good pattern or a, or a recommendation on, on this. So I hope like uh, Philip will have something to show on DOAG. And I see, okay. And maybe he will share it with us. And so I think that, I think that's that's great. Philip is an amazing fellow, um, which means I don't think I'd want to do the next session on testing in December because Dog I think comes after the session. And all right, so maybe I'll look at doing it in January, or we'll skip January because the first Tuesday in January, not always the best time to do a, an office hour session. <laughs> um, but in any case, so let's plan on on January. To, to do a follow-up around data setup. I'll check with Philip and find out if, how, if he'll be in shape to do that. And, and really just, I, I would hope to have a similar kind of conversation among those who are already doing it. Mike, have you, have you addressed that as well in grappling with that? I'm, I'm not doing so. Now we're hearing you through, through Swathi's mic. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> now the echo doesn't matter Sorry. so much. And by the way, there were 20 something people yeah. sticking around for our conversation. <laughs> It's really yeah. difficult with just two people yeah. in one room and it's right. like, yeah. so can you move with? <laughs> okay, well, listen, I've already kept you on a lot. 
So that's my plan right now is I'll look at doing a session probably in January around the data mocking, whatever. Well, and I'll touch base with a number of you to, to get uh, ideas on putting it together. Um, all right, any, any other okay. comments, any feedback? Oh, it was good. Yeah, okay. it was awesome. Thank I, you great. for the opportunity. You're welcome. I really enjoyed it. Fantastic, so, hi Sam. If, uh, yeah, if, if you want to see me, you have to put my video back on. <laughs> That's right, I killed his video at the end because I wanted to just leave it up for, um, for Swathi. Here, ask you to see, there, there you yeah. go. Uh, I, I forget that when I turn it off, you are cooked. You can't turn it back on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really <laughs> the turning off the uh, rollback through just the uh, ut.run because then you don't have to go actually add the annotation back in the code um, and just turn on and off the manual rollback. Yeah. Some of the people here in the room, they said that, uh, Sam, you're, you're just crazy coding. So mm -hmm. that, that was very impressive. <laughs> it was. <laughs> hey, hey, live coding I, was very I, I cheated. I cheated a lot. I actually set up live templates before and had just to uh, uh, pull the, the, or, or remember the shortcuts for them. <laughs> you, are, you are a real pro. It was very <laughs> smooth, very smooth. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, yes. So I won't keep you any further. Thanks so much. And, uh, and we'll be talking. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.